10.30 here in uh, beautiful Colorado. Hopefully notifications are going out. I have a really uh, intense situation that I'm faced with today. I'm having to make some choices and they're not good. It doesn't feel good. It feels like impending doom. Hi, Mike. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not a good day. So after having to deal with all that bullshit with the toilet yesterday, hey, I'm not that great, <laughs> but it's okay. It could always be worse. RP, hey, thank you for being in here. So I am faced with having to make a decision today for a man by the name of Jerry. And I want you to know a little bit about Jerry. Hi, Bohika, good morning. He is one of the most kind people. Um, let me just start off by saying I I need I need money for a nonprofit. I have more than exhausted my emergency temporary shelter budget. I have to make sure that I have X amount of dollars every month coming in and it's an unknowing operation when you're running a 501c3 because when you don't have regular uh, consistent donations coming in, it makes it kind of difficult to maintain budgets for certain things. So while the money was there, it's gone and I'm about to dip into another facet of a budget that if I don't get some money coming in, it's going to really uh, put me in a hardship with the with the 501c3. But you know what? Um, it is what it is, and I have to do the right thing. Thank you, RP. And today, I'm going to be dealing with Jerry. Jerry has been in this motel behind me for 10 days, and he's been in shelter for 12 uh, Jerry is just a wonderful man. He lives homeless out on the streets. And if you've been following my story with Zaina, with the Jeep and all of that, well, Jerry was taking care of Zaina. And Jerry fell incredibly ill while I was gone in Florida. And the cops found him one day and called medical for him. And he stayed in the hospital for a week. He has congestive heart failure. Uh, he has a list of conditions that are not in his favor to survive on the street, okay? And he's older. And he's always been the one out here to try to take care of others because he does believe in work. He wants to go back to work. He's not anywhere in any physical condition to work. The man can't even walk. He can barely breathe. He went into the hospital for a week, had some procedures. They released him back to the street, literally right back to the street. And I'm gonna go out to the location today that he was living in. It got posted today by the city of Denver to be swept in exactly a week from today. So now I'm faced with having to challenge my moral compass on taking this man out of this motel and taking him back to this camp. I'm not gonna do it. I'm going to pay for him to stay here and I've got to recover donations. So if you are able, I don't care if it's $5, $10, $2. In my about section, there are all the ways to donate. Cash App, it's Dignity Hands, Venmo at HHFDC, which stands for Helping Hands for Dignity Coalition. You can use PayPal. I prefer not to use PayPal, especially under the nonprofit name. If you want to use my personal PayPal, that's okay too. I have a way to transfer that money. Why can't I take him home with me? So yeah, that's a fabulous question. Uh, because the man can't do stairs and he can barely walk. Okay, so if I had 
the means to take him home with me, I certainly could do that. But he needs to be able to heal and care for himself, which he's doing quite well in this room with me checking on him, with help checking in on him, uh, with a regular healthy diet. He's um, got a regimen of medication. So thank you for the sincere uh, approach about asking me why I can't take him home with me. And if, if, you're, being, if you're being facetious, you're gonna get blocked from being in here because I'm not fucking around with the inhumaneness of what's been occurring on the streets. The city of Denver has plenty of respite rooms and opportunity to identify this man and house him. But instead, after they released him for the week, nobody followed up. I was out of town. Okay, Amy, thank you, I apologize. I was out of town and I come back and I have heard that Jerry was hospitalized, but I have not seen Jerry. Please don't be, please don't, please don't be rude to you. <laughs> Come walk in my shoes and, and have to deal with all the people every day. Why don't you just take them home with you? Why don't you just set them up in your yard? Why don't you just put them in your house? Why don't you let them use your toilet? I get this shit all day long and it grinds on me, especially when we have people out here dying, okay? So when I got back, I had heard that Jerry was hospitalized for a week. I didn't see him. I didn't know where he was. I failed to ask. A couple days go by and I see Jerry coming out of a tent and he comes over and talks to me. And he was so sick that day. They released him to the streets, still sick. He got sicker. I took him to the emergency room at Denver Health Denver Health told me at three o'clock that afternoon that he had pneumonia. Then at 6.30, he had an upper respiratory infection. And then at nine o'clock, I got a call saying, yeah, we're releasing Jerry back to the street. I said, you gotta be shitting me. I put the doctor on the phone and the doctor got on the phone with me and said, absolutely not. He does not at all qualify for any respite room, okay? I had to put this man in my car at 10 o'clock at night, okay, <laughs> and try to find a hotel. There was not a single motel room in the entire metro area anywhere. I was willing to pay $200 to just get him somewhere. It was one o'clock in the morning and he was sleeping in my car and he finally I finally gave in to taking him back out to his tent. And I stayed with him for a while and I got people to help him out there. And the next morning I got up and I found him a motel room um, for a couple nights in a not good place that I didn't want him. And so eventually I moved him over here. And in the process of all of this, I've been working with a connection with the Coalition for the Homeless. Again, the taxpayer subsidized <laughs> coalition that makes sure that people aren't out here dying on the street. Um, and they've got a whole list of reasons that they don't have respite for him to include him not passing a criminal background check from a drug charge uh, in the 80s. So we're housing um, sex offenders, we're housing violent offenders, we're housing all kinds of people right now in, in these motels. Everything is in flux because the federal money has uh, kind of uh, gone away and of course you know we're not going to direct resources to the right place when we've had all this free money coming in because we got to make sure everybody gets paid first. So here I am, this tiny nonprofit, faced with having to make this decision because, and bless her heart, this connect that I have with the Coalition for the Homeless, she's been working around the clock, so have I, to be able to find a respite room for him. Um, we are putting people up in motels just because um, during sweeps, they're getting motel rooms and uh, I, 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 can't, I, I can't even really explain what's going on here because I, I don't know, it just, it, none of it is, is adding up. 
So I'm about to go into this office and see what rate I can get for 10 more days. Uh, the rate I got for seven days here was $580. And people, uh, that's cheap. That is super, super cheap. Thank you, RP. Thank you very, very much. And um, so that's the choice I get to make today. I get to either pack this man up, check out time it is 11 o'clock, or I get to pay so he can continue to heal. He has a huge ulcer in his leg because he's a diabetic. Um, he's been doing good with uh, cooking and, and eating some healthy food and getting back on track that way. He tells me, no, just take me back out to the camp. So I'm supposed to take him back out to the camp so he can get swept in a week if he doesn't make it if he doesn't end up back in the ER. I mean, I'm trying to do the right thing here. I, I'm doing the work for the city. I'm protecting the most vulnerable while they, while they're using my tax dollars for their safety net. And they're not helping this man at all, at all. Jerry, I need money. That's what I need. I need people to donate so I can just keep this man sheltered. And so there are ways to donate in, in the about section and, and their RP, just put, put it up in the, uh, in the comments on the chat. So, uh, you know, just hang with me here for a minute and I'm not gonna intentionally go in there to, to record those people, but I'm gonna leave this, this going because this is a factual thing happening. And Jerry knows that I'm reaching out to people for donations because this is what we're supposed to do. Yeah, Elliot has absolutely nothing to do with anything. And remember we talk about how you're going to you're going to be criminalized for the rest of your life including homelessness and you will continue to have um, your debts that you've paid to society come back up and haunt you, repunish you and essentially leave you to die on the street. And that's really what is happening with this man right now. And if he doesn't get better, and I, I'm gonna have to stop everything I'm doing to make sure that after I pay for this next bout of shelter, that he's somewhere else off of the street. And I don't know what it's gonna take, but, um, it's really putting me not in a good frame of mind on, on bitterness and, and, and I, I need help. I do need help because it's been one fire after another since, since I got back from, from being gone and I, I feel guilty about that because I could have spearheaded a lot of this and I wasn't here to do it. So while I know I can't control all that and I have to live my life, it's still a weight. I have to carry it's still a fact it still exists it just doesn't it's i can't make that go away okay so um i'm gonna go in here and and see what i can get for a decent rate for the next hopefully 10 days and uh we'll go from there and see what happens for my friend Jerry in 333. This man is not, he's not well, and he needs to be able to stay. And so I kind of want to see what I can do for the next 10 days. Yeah. I just paid for a few extra nights after I had paid for a week and can't keep doing that because I can get a better rate the longer I go out, right? Um, you can tap weekly, monthly.
prison cell. What's happened from hometown studios? Of um lease lease Um, it's Glendale, Cherry Creek. I'm not sure of the intersections. I'm just here. Alameda. Hmm? Alameda. Alameda and Leapsdale. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 You said for 10 days? Yeah. I don't know what you have. What would be the difference? Let me see. additional mm -hmm. three nights on top of what what we, we weekly rate can we get just for a week Five sixty something. Five seven. Five fifty on the RV is five. That's the same. Mm -hmm. So um I absolutely cannot be here in on the seventh day. So I'm gonna have to pay for at least eight. Mm -hmm. So it'd be the same rate. Nightly late, right? So you give me eight nights. And then I'll reassess at that point. Housekeeping should be somewhere up there, right? Or around. And I still have the hundred dollar deposit on file, right? Is that you're not having another one, right? Okay.
Thank you so much for sending the cards. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, that's done for the uh, cheap rate of uh, six forty one twenty eight. And let me tell you, this isn't the Hilton people. There are a ton of displaced families in here. There are a ton of children in here. And um, about the second day we were in here, I was, uh, I was here checking on Jerry and uh, I, he's, he is on the third floor, but we have close access to the elevator and he's not been out of here yet. Um, I went to get on the elevator and there were these two little boys and the one was, they had a grocery cart. They use grocery carts here to get their stuff up and down the elevator. And this little boy was obviously kind of babysitting his little brother. His little brother was sitting in the basket of the cart. And uh, this is so hard. <laughs> and I walked by him and I smiled and you know, the, the older boy looked up at me and he just, the look on his face, he was stressed. This little boy couldn't have been more than seven or eight. And his little brother was in diapers still, so he was under two. And uh, he was, they were standing by the elevator with this cart of stuff and I didn't see an adult anywhere. And so I kind of looked around and I walked down to Jerry's room, did what I needed to do real quick, and I came back, and and they were still at that cart, and the baby in the cart reached out, he put his arms out to me, started kicking his legs like he wanted me to pick him up, and he was all happy, and, and the little brothers just standing there trying to, you know, not look at me or talk to me, and I said, honey, is, is your mom or dad close? Are they Are they around? Yeah, my mom, my mom is down in the office because we're getting, we're getting kicked out of here and I have to stay with our stuff. I think I was more rocked by that than the whole thing with Jerry. It's just compounding. There's so much to spare. And there's just not enough to be able to help everybody. That's all. It's hard. It's really, really hard. So I, um, I talked to Jerry, you know, about what we were going to be faced with today. And he said, no, just take me out to the street. I said, no, Jerry, I'm not doing it. I am not going to do that. And he's, you know, he said, well, I'll just go. Well, no, I'm not going to just leave you to check out and not be able to walk and go anywhere. And I said to him, I said, Jerry, you have to, you have to give me consent to talk a little bit about you and what's going on so I can ask people to help because that's that's my job that's what I'm supposed to do no 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 you're not gonna do this you're not gonna do this and Jerry is a very proud man um, and no he's he's not a drug user you guys okay <laughs> um, he's just been behind the ball for a long time and uh, he didn't want 
any of this. And he keeps telling me every time I go in the room, you need to go, you need to go take care of, the, care of the other people, but don't, don't get screwed, don't get screwed. Jerry's got a little bit of um, a speech issue. He's got some stuttering issues and communication barriers are very much there. And uh, I said, Jerry, you just need to give me consent to be able to tell a little bit of your story. I need to, I need you to say yes. And uh, he just sat there. We were on the phone talking about this. That's another reason I need him here is because this is one of the only um, lower end motels that has telephones. Okay. <laughs> and this little kitchenette. And so I, I said, Jerry, I need you to, I need to hear you say yes. And he just sat there and he wouldn't say anything. I said, Jerry, say yes. And he said yes. Well, he kind of said yes. He kind of, Ugh. I said, Jerry, I need to hear you say yes. And he did. So, um, that's why I'm doing this stream. I could, I could just spend all the money. I, you know, whatever. It's there. I'll just spend it all. This is the right thing to do, you know? Let's drive over here and um, go up there. And um, I just want him to say hi and then I'm in the stream because um, I have to go do some grocery shopping for him done but I just have to drive to the other side of the building here see seven days from today is the day of that sweep and I can't be here to deal with that because I'm gonna have to be dealing with that sweep so I wanted to pay 10 days, I thought I'd get a better rate, but I didn't. I just paid for eight days. And uh, yeah, RP, that, that'd be great. I, we should talk. Um, who would thumbs down this? There's a lot of people that follow me that absolutely hate what I do. They hate it. Yes, that hate still does exist. And uh, I don't care. That, I, I don't even care. Who has time to focus on that when there's all these things to focus on, you know? So, <clears throat> yeah. All right, here we go. I might lose you for a second because uh, I got to go the elevator or the staircase. His cards. He's got new cards. We have to do new cards every time we change the departure dates. Let me go back here and grab those cards.
Um, you just found my channel yesterday, but thank you for joining. Um, just trying to do some homeless outreach today. No fighting with cops yet. Days are it's days young, right? <laughs> it was hot as hell yesterday, you guys. It got to 100. It's gonna be close today. And the wind is uh, picking up. Isn't the view beautiful? It's just a really beautiful place. I don't know why people think Denver's so freaking fantastic. Uh, I'm a native here. There, you know, there's some pretty parts in this state, but you know, this metro area we have, it ain't all that. live stream and uh we just show you face <laughs> my buddy jerry all right here's this leave this unlocked i'll come in in a second just leave it propped okay so that's the deal and uh he wasn't feeling good at all yesterday, so he's had ups and downs. One of the nicest guys out there. Okay, well, I'm gonna end this for now, and uh, I'm gonna check back in later. I'll tell him you said hi, you guys. Thank you. Um, I gotta get him some groceries and stuff, make sure he's all set up. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to check back in from the site that he was staying at that's been posted for a sweep. It was posted this morning. And uh, we'll have a little conversation out there. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Again, we need financial support. Uh, my nonprofit um, really needs to replenish this emergency housing budget emergency shelter i don't ever say i can offer housing because i can't it's simply emergency shelter and a thousand dollars does not go far at all so in the about section there's ways to donate um and you know make a note if you you know specifically want this to to be used for jerry it's good to know that that's documented uh, if I bring in extra money, it just goes right into the nonprofit account. So, uh, yeah, so that's today's story. And, uh, hey, Lucinator, thank you very much. It, it's, this is what we should all, everybody should be doing this. We should just be able to come together as decent human beings and get this stuff done. We know government is a, in colossal failure and it just literally destroys everything it touches and we let it happen um nobody's holding government especially the city of denver accountable to to identifying uh, the most vulnerable and uh taking care of of what they should with that safety net that we all pay for so you know that's that all right you guys thank you very much i will check in later <laughs>